Hi, everyone, and welcome to this webinar, How Microsoft Project Can Help You Become More Profitable. I'm your host, JC Moy, and I'm the marketing strategist for Office 365 here at your web. And uh, this week, I'll be joined by a very special guest, Rassam Patel, who's a product manager for Microsoft. He'll go through the different features of Microsoft Project Online and show you how it can become a profitable part of your business. Hi, Rustam. Hi, JC. So, uh, let's take a look at the agenda for today. So, the first thing we're going to see with uh, Rustam is what is new in Project Online. Then we'll tackle what it's such a golden opportunity for your business. Then we're going to touch on how it will enable you to become to be more profitable, and then uh, a little part about SureWeb, uh, how we're your partner in the cloud, and finally we'll have the Q and A. So we also have some polls that uh, I'll be opening shortly, and uh, at the end with the Q and A session, just don't be afraid to ask questions throughout the webinar, and we'll try to to answer everything. And uh, uh, this webinar is recorded, so you get access to it in about 24 to 48 hours uh, on demand. And uh, I will now let Rustam present his, himself, and uh, we're going to move on with the presentation. Great, thanks, JC. And uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Rustin Patel. I'm uh, here at Microsoft. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Microsoft Project Nationally. Um, we have an exciting session talking about how Project Online can help improve you know, your profitability as well as it pull along a handful of other services and solutions that Microsoft has to offer. Um, but before we get started, I actually wanted to do a hand, three quick polls of the audience just to help get a better understanding and feeling of those in attendance to cater the discussion to what's most valuable. Um, so, JC, if you can present uh, the first uh, poll, and they're just yes and no questions, quite oh, straightforward. Okay. Here we go with the, the first poll. So, do you currently resell Office 365? So, that could be just Pro Plus, that could be E1, E3, E5, if you're familiar with those offerings. Uh, just take a quick second to answer yes or no, probably keep that up for a couple more seconds. Yeah. So I think we have, yeah, a couple people are still voting. Yeah, and this information helps me to understand, you know, where you guys are at and make sure that this session is more tailored to your needs. All right. So I'll close the poll now and we, we're going to take a look at the results. So we have a 75% rate of people that currently resell Office 365 and 25% that are not reselling Office 365. Okay, so majority of them are reselling. Um, so that's good. And then we'll load up the next poll. All right. And I'm very excited to see the responses to this one. Or do you currently resell Microsoft Project Online? So give that about 20 seconds. And even for those who answered no that you don't resell Office 365, uh, you'll hopefully find this presentation that, you know, whether you're doing it or you're not, that Project Online can be a great introduction um, and a first workload and ultimately, you know, maybe bring you on Office 365 in the future. Um, so, I mean, there's no, there's, there's no good or bad answer uh, to that first question. All right. So, I will be closing the poll in a few seconds so you can still vote. Okay, we're not getting more responses. Here we go, 71% voted. So here harder the results. So 100% said no to <laughs> Do you currently resell Project Online? So. Okay, this will be a valuable session for everyone then. And the last poll question uh, that we're gonna put up, and this is probably just for the cohort of people that answered yes to reselling Office 365. Um, not necessarily though. Um, but are you at all interested in reselling 
higher under premium workloads that Microsoft has to offer, and those particularly in Office 365 E5. So think if you're knowledgeable of Power BI or advanced compliance, uh, those types of suites which are certainly more differentiated and help differentiate your business amongst um, just the standard uh, productivity conversation. Um, so take a second just to answer that. And it's not asking if you do or don't, but are you interested? Because those usually are higher ARPU values and uh, stickiness with customers we usually find. So I'll, I'll leave that up on a couple of seconds more. Give a chance people to vote. Okay, so 80% voted. Let's close the poll and share the results. So it's 50-50. Okay, very good. Okay, that's, that's great then. So if we can just hand it over to my screen, I will get rolling. So thank you so much for that feedback. Um, I'll tell you this discussion towards it. And as you think of questions, of course, um, feel free, we'll have time at the end. So I mentioned my name is Rustam here at Microsoft looking after project. I've been with Microsoft for a couple of years. I actually worked in their licensing and pricing side of things. Um, so that was a lot of fun and I've always been partner facing and understand the value our partners bring, whether it's SureWeb or our value resellers like you folks. Um, interestingly, I also have uh, my uh, PMP, which is a certification in project management. So when I respectfully say I'm excited about the space and what project can do, I'm, I, you should know that I really mean it. So let's get started. I think an interesting thing we talk about, you know, what we're ultimately doing, we're, we're trying to resell licenses here and offer solutions to customers that are tailored to their needs. And for those of you which are traditional Office 365 resellers, that conversation is usually around how do you work? How do your employees engage? It's a workplace conversation. But we get thinking about projects. You know, these are the cool things. These are, you know, bridges, these are buildings, these are secret projects. Um, you know, just last week or I think two weeks ago now, you know, we had we, Microsoft launched a new Xbox One X uh, that was titled Project Scorpio. So, I mean, a lot of these things usually relate to a company's sustainable competitive advantage. It's about introducing a new product or improving a business process that delivers on a certain result. And ultimately, you know, it's, it's a new conversation that you can have with, you know, your existing customer base um, and for new customers because you don't have to go and talk about, hey, how do you work? You get a chance to have a more fun conversation say, what are you working on? Or what are you working towards? So we get to have those new conversations that circle around, you know, potentially innovation, value chain, or business transformation. We're going to spend time on three things today, talking a little bit about what is Project Online and as well as what's new. So I know most of you, everyone answered um, on the poll that you were that you were a Project Online reseller. So I'm going to demystify that for you. Talk a little about why it should matter uh, to you folks, as well as how you'll be best set up to succeed. So jumping into it, I always like to start a little bit around, you know, what does this space look like? And this is applicable for both, you know, enterprise customers as well as small and medium customers. Um, this box is going to articulate a project's potential. And the way we measure that is on two different things. One is around doing the right projects. So picking and choosing what are the right areas uh, to invest in. Any organization is going to have limited resources, whether it's time, money, um, or human capital, and you want to do everything in the world, but you can only commit those and kind of take, take chances on certain, certain things. Um, so that's one axis. The other one is about once you've chosen those projects and you know where to invest your time and money, where to invest in what's next and that competitive advantage, um, then it's about execution. And the, the Project Management Institute, this governing body that actually issued my PMP and many others as well, conducted a study, and it turns out that around 40% of companies are actually choosing the right projects. So what this means is that, hey, we spent the time and money, we did this, and then they go back and say, hey, when you did this project, what was the end result you're looking for? And did it actually get there? And the other half is around doing the projects right. Hey, you had a budget, you had a certain time period this was supposed to get done, and you had a goal of this. Did you know, those three things get done right? Um, in terms of about two out of three of those you know, are usually not happening. And so this is very commonplace. And what that ultimately means is that a negative area in the box is this untapped potential or lost return on investment. So it translates into real dollars. And ultimately, our solution can help um, fill that gap by helping uh, decision makers choose the right projects as well as execute them successfully. We talk about project, we're talking about usually two things. One is project management, and the other one is project and portfolio management, also PPM. 
That is the only acronym I'm going to hope for you guys to remember today. Um, and our solution can do this. All companies or any good company should have a strategy, a purpose why they exist. And then an opportunity or a new idea comes. Sometimes it's a threat in the market. Sometimes it's a new product entry or something like that. And ultimately, there's you know, multiple ways of approaching an opportunity or uh, a challenge that comes up. So on ideating, and then of course planning, executing, and ultimately deriving to an outcome. So that's what the, our solution, you know, we're trying to be able to help our customers do is you have a strategy, let's get to the outcome and all the steps in between that we can help you with. We think about project online. We start to think about how your teams can better collaborate, getting that employee engagement up, maximizing that human capital, getting timely insights in real time for decision makers need to understand where our costs are at, where our benefit realization is, as well as extensibility, whether that's third party or even Microsoft 365 and our own internal offerings. Project Online is actually very friendly with a lot of other applications that also touch upon project management. So we can kind of be that backbone or that main system and then other lines of business can integrate into the system, which makes for a really great dis discussion because we, and I've already spoken to customers just last week actually, some customers love uh, Jira, which is a, a tool for, for app development and, um, and development operations. And you know, those people are not going to throw away that tool by no means, and that's not what we're trying to say. We're trying to say, hey, your developer people love that, but your business people don't, and they might not have the insights they need, so why don't you integrate that, and our solution can do just that. Speaking about this thing called project management and project and portfolio management, or PPM, um, this is an overly simplified structure in an organization where you have an executive and full of portfolio managers, project managers, and team members. Now, an executive, it could be you know, someone at, uh, at you know, a typical CFO, or it could be a VP, or whatever the case is. Um, and then a portfolio manager, this could be someone who's having to look after you know, lines of business. Sometimes that's product, sometimes that might just be marketing um, or something or the other. And then individual project managers, I mean, any one person might be managing a handful of projects, or usually just one. Sometimes that's developing a new product, development of a new process, whatever the case may be, and then ultimately the resources staff under them. So project management is what you're seeing done here. We have this product called Project Online Professional. You see that little footnote on the bottom where it can operate independently without PPM. Um, so mainstay what we often see in what's going to be a big discussion of, of the next couple of minutes is around project management. And specifically in the in a small medium business space, even the corporate account space, you usually the de facto solution is, hey, we have a lot of project managers or people that need to look after a lot of different siloed things. I mean, they're going to want just Project Line Professional, which is this tool that just works. It's, it's an all-in-one solution, um, and it's great, and it's been de facto of, I think, a lot of project management software for a long time. Then those who are wanting to do something more holistic, where it's, hey, everyone in the organization needs to have this data. We have those other offerings to line. We have an offering for team members where they can plug in, see the data, update things, as well as one that's right for people overlooking many projects or many portfolios which ultimately dubs PPM. So I hope that demystifies the two things we're going to be talking about today. The product itself is really cool. We're going to talk about six things in terms of what's of value today to customers. The first one is around ideation. When, and I, I was a bit floored by this because I think it's, you know, it's simple. We say, hey, we need a tool for ideation. You know, anyone could say, why don't you write up a list or just send an email. Um, but ultimately, when you get into these large organizations, things become a bit more complex because then it's around, okay, well, there's, there's hundreds of ideas. Let's, what's a good way to filter it down? We get filtered down by budget, by priority, by benefit, and then you want people to sort through that data and sift through it. And our tool can, can do this meaningfully. It can be a central point that you're maximizing on employee engagement and human capital and getting all those ideas and ultimately the people who have the budgets to approve these things can look at everything, see what's the cost of them as well as what's the benefit. And these are all things that are totally customizable. Developing realistic plans, this has been the mainstay of, of uh, project, Microsoft Project and Project Online. Um, so, of course, building those traditional waterfall or Gantt chart views, really powerful, very rich, being able to manage resources um, in a whole sort of different ways, um, as well as with many, many templates pre-built right out of the box, as well as pre-built reporting, which is always valuable. Um, another really interesting thing that's very timely in the market is around self-reliant teams. We know that the workforce may often be mobile, so not everyone's in a room and projects, no project gets done alone. So of course, being able to have your customers, employees have the right tools in front of them for the people to do things is really timely. So 
project, of course, with that essential SKU, it can, it can be layered down to those team members. And also there's a new lightweight application called Microsoft Planner. And very recently, just as of, I think, the start of or the end of October, we released um, this thing called a, a planner that actually integrates in the project. So again, project being that backbone, it can serve people on the upper end of the spectrum in portfolios, as well as those on the lower end in the team members. Of course, Project Align is in the cloud. It integrates really nicely with Office 365, which is our suite of productivity applications. I mentioned around you know, serving the upper epsilon of people, whether they're portfolio managers or executives, so around getting those insights. And for those familiar with Power BI, which is our premier solution for vis data visualization across that's agnostic to any data source, um, we now have a new content pack that's available that's just pre-built that has a lot of very like 13 powerful views that portfolio managers usually want to look after. And we just recently announced that also uh, a handful of weeks ago. And the last, as I mentioned, that we work really well with other systems like Jira and other things. And uh, another feature release we had just a couple of weeks ago making this webinar very timely is we also announced that we have agile features built in. And all agile is, as I mentioned, that waterfall has always been the mainstay of project management. Agile is a new methodology or approach to project management that's growing in popularity, mainly in development operations. But we now have one natively built in. And even from the customer conversations I had just last week, this was super popular. Not just that we have one built in, but also that it works really neatly in um, you know, appropriately with other external systems like Jira. So Project Online, there are a lot of different SKUs or offerings that we have. I touched very briefly on a few of them, like professional premium and essentials. Uh, there's also a handful on-prem, but today this focus discussion is going to be just on the cloud. So let's take a double click at these offerings. So the one in the middle, that de facto solution, that one that's a standalone product, this is ultimately what I think will be, you know, what you'll be likely selling the most of, especially in that SMB and CA space uh, and, and corporate account space, excuse me. Um, the prices you see here are just the, uh, the, the marketplace prices. So if you went to our Microsoft.ca slash project, these are the prices you'd see. I know through, through Sherwood you get different pricing, of course, so you can add uh, your margin on top of that. Um, but ultimately take a look. The, the offerings here, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's not about, hey, we, if you have a 100-man shop or a 100-man customer, the goal is not to sell them all premium. That is not the right way, or are they going to get the most value out of it? It's about who is the end user. Is it a team member? You recommend essentials. Is it someone who needs to actually manage projects? Is there a day-to-day -day task? You'd recommend professional. Is it someone who has to oversee hundreds of projects, you know, tens of them, or whatever the case is? Um, is it a boardroom discussion? Then you'd recommend premium. And you know, in any organization, you know, the, the it's a good and bad thing. You know, the good thing is that. Uh, or the bad thing, rather, first, is you're not going to be able to sell everyone on project because not everyone in an organization may need project software. You turn that into an opportunity because some customers are like, hey, you know, we want to, we want cloud, we want a cloud solution, and you may even go and pitch them Exchange Online or email, and they're like, no, we don't want to do email because I, I can't afford my email to go down. I don't trust where the data is being stored or some other thing like that. With project, it's a different discussion because it's a, only a, a unit within an organization, so it can be a seed for you to plant, build a trust, build add-on services, get it done right, and then find other avenues into that business. So a project actually makes for a great first cloud workload, which we'll talk a little bit more uh, very shortly. The last takeaway on this slide is that Essentials uh, offering. On the left-hand side, it's actually a product that can't be really purchased individually. So if you had 100 a 100-man shop of, uh, at a customer and you sold them only essentials, it would effectively be useless. Reason being is that essentials works off of projects that are actually published to the cloud, which is a line item in, included in professional and premium. So it doesn't, there's no ratio. You could have one professional to 1,000 essentials, but as long as you have one professional or one premium, as this footnote states down here, uh, those customers and people using essentials will, of course, get value out of that offering. So let's talk on the next track around the partner opportunity. I mentioned that project is great for new customer conversations. And I titled the slide simply, what to listen for, think about, and discuss with your customers. 
Now, I know in the SMB space or the CA space, in the corporate account space, it might not always be C-level positions, but more or less you're going to understand what I'm trying to get at here. For parties that are interested in IT, you know, whether it's the, the office of IT or CIO, these are the people that are going to be, you know, indebted with figuring out how do we manage strategic initiatives. You know, a lot of innovation and transformation is often coming out of the IT group because technology is what's kind of driving a lot of disruption. You know, from the customer conversations that I had just last week, just governance of data was a big piece and even governance of tools. A lot of uh, customers have different systems and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying if you can't govern them in a meaningful way or integrate them, then it becomes problematic. And luckily Project Online, as I mentioned, is, is great with working extensively with other applications. And last is piece around bimodal and agile. I mentioned that waterfall methodology. I mentioned this new popular agile methodology. It's not that one's better than the other. Um, I mean, you wouldn't want to build a bridge using agile methodology, which is kind of like a, a, a try and repeat, a rinse and repeat approach. Um, obviously, you'd want to build a bridge in a methodical way, knowing that the parts are right at the right time, that the labor is there to get the job done, you know, the hours are worked so that the employees aren't um, over, overburdened. Um, and the interesting thing is that there are not a lot of tools. There's very few, actually. Um, I'm even finding it hard to think of any right now off the top of my head that actually can do both. Um, so this word bimodal just means a solution that can manage waterfall, which is traditional, and agile methodologies under one umbrella. And this is super valuable to project managers and portfolio managers alike. In the Office of Finance, they're going to be very concerned around things around capital management or risk management, predictive analytics. With projects, some projects can range, you know, millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars. There are a handful of municipalities and other public sector entities where I think they're managing, I, I kid you not, like tens of billions of dollars in assets. So getting a chance in the line of sight to understand, you know, where there's risk or where there's extra money or a deficit in money, getting that view in real time is super valuable and great, and great for making important decisions. So if you're talking to a CFO or anyone in the office of finance, just ask, what is your approach to to uh, to managing your all, you know all your capital, or if you know tomorrow you you got ten million dollars extra, what would you actually do with it? How would you know where to invest invest it? From an operations perspective, things around business transformation, resource planning, or value chain. Um, there's this really cool discrete manufacturing company that we have in Canada, and what these folks did is uh, I'll, I'll tell you who they are. There's this, it's this company that actually makes custom water parks. And we think about that every client, every service they do is always different. No two clients or two things they produce are the same. So everything is a custom project. They're a fully project-based organization. And Disney is actually one of their customers. Now, when Disney comes to them and they say, hey, guess what? We need this to come up three more weeks. How much is that going to cost? Or, hey, we have $10 million short uh, for this month, um, but we need this thing to land on time. Now, when it's Disney, you know that's a customer that's going to have repeat business. Uh, especially for water parks, and you need to answer them in a timely manner. Now, and previously they would take, you know, they have to answer with something, so they take, you know, run through the cycles, get all the data, take about a week or so. But now what they've done with Project Online, and they have a PPM solution, is, you know, within that same day, they can turn around something saying, hey, here it is, here's a, a good, better, best option, because they have that data right at their fingertips, and they've kind of productized that data. So now they can go to anyone and say, hey, guess what? We're not just going to build you a great water slide, but as we know, things are always changing, even in the midst of projects. We're going to give you a line of sight to that and offer you uh, options all along the way. So they've been able to actually complement their own value chain, giving more value to their own end customers with the data they have with Project. And I just love that story. I just think it's, it's, it's such a powerful story. And you know, a bit unusual or not when you always hear about and then from HR perspective, we talk about how we want people to always work together. Um, so getting employee engagement, making sure that people's ideas are easily voiced. I know sometimes it can be quite challenging to build a business case or even know where to submit that. Things around work management as well as change management, Project Online can be a great, uh, great solution for that. And the interesting thing in this space is people who actually work on projects or care about projects don't, are not always called project managers or PMs. They might have these different titles like a VP of assets or an R&D lead or a vice president of strategy. So be on the lookout for those types of roles um, as well. And then the ribbon at the bottom talks about certain, I think, verticals that are obvious and some of them that are maybe a bit not, but manufacturing and resources and construction. 
um, are really our, our popular ones. Professional services was, I think, quite interesting. So even small boutique consulting shops, um, they're often serving bigger clients and they want to have that level of professionalism and level of detail that Project Online can offer. Um, supply chain and also just product management. And it's interesting, I get access to actually see all the types of customers that sign up for Project Online trials at Microsoft.com. Um, and a lot of them turn out to be construction professional services. So I know, you know with confidence that there's absolutely um, intentional customers looking in that. I want to talk to you about two sales motions. First one is around new and modernized. And I talked a little bit about how Project Online might be a great first cloud workload because it doesn't require everyone in an organization to get on board. And it's small enough that you can you know, ease into a customer and easily demonstrate value really quickly. So we think about you know, what is the value prop around there for customers that are new to the cloud. It's their first workload. We get a chance to talk about simplified deployment and IT management, that they're always going to get an up-to-date uh, up software, whether that's security, as well as service improvements. So things on the back end are always improving. For example, just things like load times. Um, we can get it done. I know it used to be crazy enough, I think four years ago, like 30 seconds just to load uh, the homepage for Project Online um, when you're using the web app. But now it's roughly around three seconds. And you know, one might say that's browser-based, that's, that's, um, that's connection-based, but ultimately on the server side too, in our cloud, we've made some significant improvements. Um, a, a staple of Project Online professionals that you know, we're meeting customers where they're at. They can install the rich desktop client on up to five PCs. So if they have a home device, a work device, um, or a mobile device, of course, they can install that where on a qualified operating system. Um, there's also ease of user reassignment. I think an interesting thing I learned in this space is that sometimes businesses will just contract out project managers and then they'll buy licenses for them. Um, and then they'll need to switch over those licenses. And that's often very challenging to do in the on-prem world. Sometimes, quite frankly, they're overpaying. You know, if they have a project manager staff for two years, but they paid for three years of it, it's not that easy to reassign. In the cloud world, it is, which is really nice and added value for those customers who might not know this. And of course, it's a rich experience. People are familiar with Office 365 or just you know, even Office 2013 or 2016, that interface, it makes sense to them. The shortcuts work, everything you'd expect. And those three things on the bottom that I mentioned, these are all new features that just launched. So any customer who's you know, maybe heard about project and knows about project, you know, they likely have not heard about these three things. And these two things are not just random features. These are things that are very timely and based on customer feedback and popularity that works with other applications we have under our scope. Now the other side of it, especially for those 50% of you that mentioned that you're interested in selling higher end workloads, you're going to want to pay particular attention to this. So this attach and expand motion, this is around selling the ecosystem of what we have to offer, whether that's Office 365 or even Microsoft 365. We think about the project ecosystem, it certainly is more than the sum of its parts. On the right hand side, you can see we have different tools for different use cases. We have our PPM solution, which is a combination of those three product offerings for Project Online. We have, of course, Microsoft Project for managing projects. We have Planner for managing work, and we have this thing which they call Microsoft Tasks for managing tasks. But of course, you know, no project, I mean, that's great for execution and planning, but actually getting the work done, things get done in things like Office 365 or Dynamics or Visual Studio, and all these things, of course, work really nicely together. Talking about the ecosystem that we have at Microsoft, um, we think usually about Windows or Office. There's this other product as well called EMS, which stands for Enterprise Mobility Suite. It's just kind of our security offering. But ultimately, these two things are now combined in a solution called Microsoft 365. And what it is, is if you see on the left-hand side, it is all these different workloads. And there's a lot of them. So things like Power BI at the top is in there, Skype for Business, uh, Threat Intelligence, traditional things like SharePoint or OneDrive, um, Windows 10 is in there, um, as well as Intune for device management. So all these different products. And they roll up into sometimes smaller suites like Office 365 E3 or E5 or even EMS E3 and E5. And you know, working here at Microsoft and working in our pricing side, I was very close to um, those uh, reseller incentives. So I know that, you know, Microsoft, we pay a lot out to our partner community for actually reselling um, Office 365 and now Microsoft 365, which is a, a bundle of bundles. 
But here's the thing. This is a project online discussion. And what we found and what works, especially with our own internal sales force here, is whenever we're trying to sell the bundle, we don't talk about everything. We never do. In fact, you think about how we used to sell Word and PowerPoint and Excel separately. That, that's a joke now. We laugh at that now. We just sell Office. We don't sell these things separately. It's, it's even crazy to think we used to. And we're trying to do the same thing now here. And you know, even back then when they started selling Office, we weren't talking about everything. You know, we weren't talking about Access Publisher. We talked probably about Excel and probably about one other thing, the things that really drill value. Um, and that's the same story here, is you want to find the things that drive value in a suite. And ultimately, if you can demonstrate value to a customer, it's like, hey, you know, if you guys had teams, think about all the time or the employee engagement you guys would get um, for employee retention or this or that. Um, or if you had Skype for business, you know, how you'd be able to work with your own external customers and clients really well or in project-based scenarios where you have to contract out a lot of different services. Um, so we find that the stack on the right-hand side here, you know, Teams, Planner, and Skype for Business, these things are in the E3, Microsoft 365 E3 suite, or even just 365 E3. This is kind of the happy medium of the things that we know that actually sell quite well, as well as that work really well with Project Line Professional. So when you're in a discussion and your customers are on the fence, because sometimes it's hard to demonstrate value, um, you can mention and you know do examples of how Project Online Professional can complement this and then tip the scales to transact as a suite versus just doing things business as usual. And the same is true on the E5 side. So the E5 workloads that are particularly work well with Project Online and that also sell really well are things like Power BI Professional, Cloud App Security, which is a solution for actually managing other third-party applications in the cloud with uh, device management, with excuse me, authentication um, and security management, as well as the advanced compliance. Um, and these things work tightly with Project Online Professional. It can help tip the scales in that. And ultimately, you know, if you're interested in selling higher end value workloads, this is what our enterprise account team does. This is the way they sell it, is they find out what's the need of the customer. Magically, hopefully we have a solution that lines up to that. And then we just talk about that. And at the end of the day, you know, it's just they're better off buying the suite because buying these things individually would end up sometimes costing more than just uh, the suite itself. And for those that aren't interested, you can kind of get a, an understanding of the direction I'm going here is you can sometimes just start if you have customers that have no cloud, they're not interested. You know, a project discussion is a different discussion than just how do you work? It's about what are you working on? And you can sell Project Online into a handful of set at a, at a customer. You can get them to value, to, to realize value in that, and then start upselling and selling more stuff. Because it's one thing to always sell everyone in the organization on a whole thing. You know, there's a time and a place, and that's great if you can do it. There are customers, sometimes you can't do that. And Project can make for a really great way to seed an account, demonstrate value, and grow that business. And that brings us to the last section around partner enablement. As a reseller, you're interested in, in really one thing, which is around profitability, but more so you're interested around keeping your customers happy and growing their accounts as well as new customer acquisition. And a way of doing that, of course, is not just through reselling licenses. I manage, imagine many of you offer deployment services or management services around that, even in some circumstances, packaged IP or help desk or whatever the case may be. And ultimately, you know, the further right you go on this, certainly it improves your bottom line and your profitability, but you're also getting the benefit of customer value and that stickiness because they trust you. There's a partner case study we did with Sensei. They're an Office 365 reseller and they kind of started going all in on Project Online. And now they actually lead with Project Online for a lot of things. And you see this quote here, uh, from their CEO, um, where they got their revenue growth from just one year, you know, over 150 annual revenue growth. And that's a combination of, yes, the margin on licenses as well as, um, you know, managed services. And you can see that growth split um, in these concentric circles around, you know, whether it's professional services or content and IP. And the thing with content and IP, of course, is that it's repeatable. You build it once and then you can reuse it. So, of course, you know, the return on investment there only goes up. Um, with every, every customer using it. Um, the types of things that they did were like solutions, training, and apps. Um, and I know this all sounds like a lot, and this is going to take me to my next point, but ultimately know that you know, the partners that have done this, 
they do very well. And they know the story I just mentioned. You start with product, you can add services, and then you can even sell more of those licenses, and then you add more services on top of those licenses. So it's a very lucrative way of seeding an account and growing, and I think a more natural fashion versus trying to do too much, boil the ocean, so to speak. So the left-hand side is what we spoke about, about doing it yourself, building new IP, building new services, but that can be a lot of effort. And luckily in Canada, we actually have a handful, and when I say handful, I mean eight, eight partners that actually just do uh, IP, they have IP and they do professional services. These partners aren't even interested in reselling licenses, they're just pure kind of consulting and solution shops. So if you don't want to do it yourself, but you're interested in getting sticky with customers and building trust, you can actually partner with one of these other uh, PPM partners in Canada, and there's a URL where you can find them uh, aka.ms slash Project Canada. We just have a section there. And if you're ever, if you're very serious about doing anything, you can of course reach out to me and I'd be happy to do any of those introductions. Otherwise, these people are very hungry for partnerships and they'd be more than open to just an unsolicited, hey, you know, Rustin told me this, so I attended this thing. Uh, they all know who I am. So that's not a problem. Uh, last thing is I have a, just a handy cheat sheet. If there's any one slide you wanted to keep from this or print out, this thing has everything from the industries, the top of mind, the what's new, um, as well as the offerings and how they work together. It's just a kind of cheat sheet, even titled so, um, if you ever just need a, a recap of everything we just went through. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to JC. All right. So we're getting closer to the end of the webinar. Here's how you can get ready to use and sell Microsoft Project Online. In our partner toolbox, we have a customer pitch deck, a demo guide, and a partner FAQ. We'll send you the deck with the link to the on-demand in a few days, in a few, well, in a day or two. Um, you can provision yourself with Microsoft Project in our partner portal called Cumulus. Uh, on that note, please stay until the end of the webinar. Uh, we'll be giving a promo code so you can provision yourself the Project Online Professional uh, for a 30 free trial. And finally, if you're not already a partner, you should sign up with us. We have a very advantageous partner program um, and uh, most people that are already partners with us say that a lot. Um, we are all about helping our partners. So as you can see on the screen, um, we have a referral, co-branded, and white-labeled partnership model. So um, with the referral, we build the customers, and they see our brand, and we provide them the 24-7, 365 customer support. Um, the co-branded shows uh, the, the ownership is uh, yours, so uh, you set the price and you bill your customers. Um, uh, your services are supported by SureWeb, and uh, we have the, the support and migration to your customers. And finally, the white label is very similar, but they don't see uh, our brand there. So you, um, you tell them, uh, that you are in charge and we support you with this partnership model. So who is ShareWeb? So we're a company born in the cloud in 1998. We have more than 5,000 partners and 55,000 organizations worldwide. Uh, we have a 500, more than 500 people uh, that work with us and five da data centers in North America. And we are a Microsoft uh, CSP partner uh, indirect in US and Canada. So here this is the sure web value. You can start selling uh, Office 365 in 10 minutes. You provision it yourself through the portal that uh, I showed you earlier called Cumulus. And uh, with the dedicated account manager that you get when you become a partner with us, you have everything you need to, to, to grow your business and look bigger than you actually are. 
So we've come to the end of the webinar. Here, how, here is how you can become a partner with us. Send an email to partner at shareweb.com or you can also call us. Um, there's a, also the, the reseller program page on our website. And the, the nice part of the webinar, here is the actual promo code. So to get access, if you're not already a partner, you first have to become a partner. So one of the three ways I, I, we've showed earlier is the way to, to get access to it. Once you're a partner, you go into cumulus.shareweb.com and when you provision the um, Microsoft Project uh, Pro, you add the promo code 30 days free Microsoft Project. So this is available to people that attended this webinar. You will be able to get 30 days and you'll get a reminder around the end of the 30 day to understand that this free demo will become payable after 30 days. And finally, we have a complete partner toolbox that gives you access to a lot of con content on Microsoft uh, 365, Office 365. We have the, the three documents about projects that are available there. So this is about it for ShareWeb and uh, Let's take a look at the questions. We have, okay. So it looks like we don't have any question here. Uh, Rustam, do you wanna add something at the end of the webinar? Uh, no, I think we can give time back. I just wanna thank everyone again. If you have any questions, you can reach out, of course, to JC or myself, happy to answer any questions for you on anything today. Yeah, so um, there's actually someone that asked a question while we were talking. Uh, again, I hope I, I, I might have not have made myself clear in the beginning, but um, the presentation deck will be available. We're going to send it in a follow up email with uh, everything in it and the link to the recording of this webinar. Oh, okay. So the question is actually uh, the chart that you uh, showed earlier, Rustam. Uh, where is the data coming from? Uh, which chart? I may specify. So there's several. There is, I mean, there's that Microsoft 365 chart. There is the project line comparison chart, and then there's that Sensei um, solution chart uh, that I had as a, as a case study. So if you could. Whoever is asking a question. Yeah. So the question from Donna uh, was about particularly the last one. So the Sensei one? Yeah. Um, so that was a case study done with that partner. Um, they provided all those figures, I think, in accordance with our Microsoft corporate team. Um, so I mean, they would have shared their gross revenue and their, their, their profitability structure before and after. Um, so I think in 2012, is uh, you know is the kind of the first snapshot we had, and then I think their CEO, you know, working with Microsoft would have helped kind of disclose and build that business case. So it, I mean, they consented to this. Obviously, it wasn't just something in a black box that we were just observing of them. Um, we had their full consent, um, and the data was grabbed from them. In fact, I actually met their CEO um, a couple, uh, yeah, just two weeks ago. Actually, if you're interested in in more of their story, I'd be happy to even connect you two together. Okay, so Donna is, ask, is asking another question. She said, what about the one where you talked about selling Office 365 compared to selling Office as a bundle versus used to sell individually, et cetera? So in terms of, there wasn't any like data points that were provided. Uh, what I can speak to is um, the, the enterprise sales team, kind of the, the, the sales structure that they have and the way our, our enterprise team is organized is, is a lot around this, uh, this idea of just finding the value, the, the, the tipping points of value. The, the workloads I provided are the ones that, you know, I get to speak with our sellers on a daily basis. The ones that we get to hear actually sell really well the ones that have, you know, often are the ones that are being talked about and, you know, we do a lot of other presentations on those ones. So I married that with the ones that actually overlap with Project Line Professional. Um, there, there are more, but I kind of wanted to focus on just the ones that I knew sell, sold really well. 
um, at least in the last nine months or since, since uh, longer than actually since, since January onwards, I've been following this so actually 11 months uh, now. Um, and Microsoft 365 used to be this other product called Secure Productive Enterprise. We recently rebranded it. So um, if in case you were familiar with Secure Productive Enterprise, um, it's the same product that we sold before. We just rebranded it. So there might be a bit of confusion around there, but this is something that I've been close to uh, since January. I've been observing and managing that business a little bit myself. Great. That's a good question. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Rustam, for the, the answer. So if yeah. there's not any other question, we'll bring the webinar to an end. Sounds good. Thank you, Rustam, and everybody have a great day, and uh, see you around in the, our next webinar. <laughs>